Hello, fabulous Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of June 2015, Love Focus. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shah. Thank you for being here. Well, as I mentioned last month, this month is big in love. One of the most important months you're going to have, one of the most important moments you're going to have in the context of love takes place over the course of this year. It is now that represents one of the more important turning points in the context of love. And it really is right out of the gate in the first days of the month. We have a full moon taking place in your opposite sign. Now, the full moon, whenever there is such important lunar activity taking place in your opposite sign, it pretty much always, <laughs> I will say always, in sometimes surprising ways, it does bring about with it lessons in love, regardless of where you are right now in the context of love. I do think that this ultimately, considering um, how positively it is speaking with other power players in the sky, is going to represent good news, positive outcomes, positive breakthroughs. But what you want to watch is um, your own mind processes and that you're not getting in your own way, okay? What we have happening with this full moon is it is first speaking with Neptune, then it becomes full and goes on to speak with Uranus and Jupiter in supreme harmony. So it's that part on the lead up that has me a little intrigued because it suggests to me that whether it's, you know, disappointments from the past, your own heightened expectations that, you know, nothing in this universe is going to fulfill, um, or you having a certain expectation that not only isn't realistic, but also might actually be influenced by things that in actuality don't really matter to you. So it might be influenced by other people and other opinions and based on messages from your past, stuff that doesn't even matter, stuff that you think that you should want is influencing you in the context of love, but might not actually be rooted in who you truly are and what it is that you really want. And so it looks like there may be a little bit of discomfort as part of this realization. But once we get you to the other side of this full moon, it looks like once you release any kind of past disappointments, any kind of inflated expectations, any kind of dramas that are actually just happening in your own head, well, if he says I, then this would happen, and then I could end up, you know, really hurt and end up on this and that, and my life could go to shambles. Like, literally, it's amazing how, I think as I look at this full moon, you may actually end up creating this whole drama that doesn't exist, all as part of magnifying this energy of um, trying to avoid past disappointments from reoccurring, uh, trying to protect yourself, or not necessarily seeing things very clearly. But once you get past that, it's like you open up and you're able to see things in a perspective that's more loving, that's more open, that's more positive, and this is where you start to welcome in some really lucky breaks, some sheer lucky breaks in the context of love. So for some of you, this is going to mean that um, I do think if you're in, a, in an established bond, this is so lovely. This is a really good sky to have. I mean, this is like expecting a proposal to come through um, and thinking it's supposed to be this amazing, grand, lavish thing with a $1.2 million engagement ring. Um, and then when it, you know, you sort of had that realization like, oh, that may not actually happen. That might not be what this is all about. Um, and then you get to the other side of it and you do have that really lovely breakthrough. You do have that moment of honesty. You do have this moment that makes you feel so loved and where the commitment solidifies just very quickly and very much to your delight. It might not be a $1.2 million ring, uh, but it might be even better and it might just delight you to no end anyways. Um, those of you who are dating somebody, this is again you sort of facing some of your own fear. I think that's going to be a big part of how this full moon plays out for you. Um, like sort of facing your own fear based on your experiences of the past, maybe even based on um, messages from your childhood as well. But it's like you're facing those. But then once you are in the moment, um, things are moving along really nicely and you're feeling close to this person and it's likely to be one very surprising moment that makes you think, oh, wow, I think that this is a very strong contender for the big picture of my life. You're feeling positive, you're feeling happy, you're feeling hopeful, and you're feeling elated in the best possible sense of the word. Those of you who are open to meeting somebody new, um, as I said, full moon in your opposite sign, pretty much, I mean, it's one of the surest 
celestial things, right? I mean, look, I am very much of the belief, like if you disconnect your internet, you lock yourself in your house and you don't interact with the world, you don't get out there, you make it that much harder for the universe to deliver some of the really lovely opportunities that could be there for you. But if you are doing your part and all your part involves is just facing the world, <laughs> getting out of where you live, uh, being willing to interact, if an invitation comes through, accept, do things that make you happy, you know, go places that you like to go. If you are doing these types of things, there should be somebody there. There should be someone there who is part of you, um, learning lessons and love, learning to appreciate yourself and to appreciate that, you know, just, you know, as it said, just like that, everything changes. That is the kind of sky that we have here where very quickly someone can show up and it feels like a real game changer. It feels like all of a sudden you realize that there is love in the world for you, that there are options available to you, and that the world is not as lonely or an isolated place as maybe before you might have felt, and especially as we're starting the month. In the first day, in the first moments of the month, there may even be that feeling, um, you know, where you're not seeing things very clearly, you may be feeling kind of isolated, uh, you may be feeling kind of alone. It's not the reality of the situation. And so if any kind of messages come through, disappointments come through internally that are based on fear, that are based on past disappointments, acknowledge them and then let them go. If they don't empower you to be open to greater love today, let them go. And you will welcome in at least one experience that is about opening your heart and helping you to understand that there is a certain desirability and there is somebody in the world for you Regardless of how things play out now, even though you've got lots of cosmic support to make amazing things happen and make amazing progress happen for you, regardless of how things work out now, there will be a moment and it won't be all in your head. There will be somebody there to help you to appreciate that you are now preparing uh, to put the past into the past and helping you to understand that you are ready to experience true love, true partnership, and a real understanding with another person. What I love about this month for you is that love is promised by the sky. So do your part, be willing, be open, and that really is all that your part requires. If you do that, you will find yourself with options and with the appreciation that there's a whole lot about you that truly can attract the type of love that feels more ideal and more delightful than you knew before.